The screams echoed through the halls of the Raymond ship as Xander stared in disbelief at the readouts on the display. The uncharted planet called Earth was infested with trellium, the most poisonous substance known to the Riemann species. But incredibly, the planet teemed with life. Human settlements covered the world, built amidst vast trellium deposits that should have scoured the surface of all living things. Xander narrowed his eyes, studying the scans. The primitive humans appeared to have total immunity to the lethal metal. Mining operations dotted the planet, with the natives handling raw trellium with their bare hands, breathing the dust without so much as a cough. It should have been impossible. He clenched his jaw as the implications sank in. The Raymonds and the Volutions had been locked in a vicious war for decades, fighting for control of the scant trellium deposits in the outer territories. Entire fleets had been annihilated for a few meager tons of the strategic resource. If the Volusians learned of this world and subjugated the trellium-resistant inhabitants, they could upend the balance of power and crush the Raymond Empire. But if Xander could strike an alliance with the humans first, it would be a turning point. Mining trellium without the need for expensive robotic extraction would give the Raymans a nearly limitless supply, and soldiers who could wield trellium-powered weaponry without debilitating side effects would decimate the enemy ranks. Xander had to make contact before the Volutians discovered this world. The fate of his species hung in the balance. He signaled his landing party to prepare for dispatch and checked his sidearm. This first encounter would change everything. Success would grant the Remans a miraculous advantage. But if Xander failed, if the Volusians arrived first, the mighty Reman Empire would crumble to ruin. And all because of a previously unknown species on an uncharted rock, barely evolved enough to leave their own atmosphere. The absurdity almost made Xander laugh. Almost. Xander strode through the gleaming corridors of the Riemann ship, the human Terry walking beside him. The decontamination process had been thorough, but Terry seemed no worse for wear. In fact, the man looked around with undisguised curiosity, taking in the sleek lines and advanced technology of the alien vessel. They entered the spacious laboratory of Dr. Zara Vox, the ship's preeminent xenobiologist. Zara looked up from her workstation, her large silver eyes widening at the sight of Terry. Fascinating, she breathed, rising to greet them. A human, in the flesh. Xander nodded. Dr. Vox, this is Terry of Earth. He has agreed to submit to a medical examination to help us understand his species' remarkable immunity to trellium. Zara circled Terry slowly, her slender fingers twitching with barely suppressed excitement. This could change everything, she murmured. If we can unlock the secrets of their biology... Terry met her gaze steadily. I'm ready to do whatever it takes for both our peoples. As Zara and her team began their scans and tests, Xander stepped away to contact the Riemann High Command. He outlined the situation in clipped, precise tones, emphasizing the urgency of securing an alliance with the humans. The response was swift and decisive. A delegation was already en route, led by none other than Admiral Zorn Krell himself. Light years away, in the heart of the Volusian Empire, Empress Zalara Vex stared at the intelligence report with narrowed eyes. Humans, she spat, as if the word left a foul taste in her mouth. We cannot allow them to fall into Raymond hands. She turned to the figure kneeling before her throne, a lithe, shadowy form clad in form-fitting black. Jax Wren, you will go to this earth, infiltrate their leadership, and report back on their capabilities. And if the opportunity arises, her lips curved in a cold smile, eliminate any obstacles to our dominance. Jax Wren bowed his head. As you command, my empress. On earth, the arrival of the Raymond delegation sparked a media frenzy. Admiral Krell, an imposing figure with chiseled features and piercing green eyes, stepped out onto the tarmac to a sea of flashing cameras and shouted questions. He raised a hand for silence. People of Earth, he began, his voice deep and resonant. We come to you in peace, seeking an alliance that will benefit both our great civilizations. As the speech continued, Jax Wren watched from the shadows, his face an impassive mask. He had already begun to weave his web of deceit, worming his way into the confidence of key officials. The Volusians would not be caught off guard. Not this time. 
Back on the Raymond ship, Zara burst into Xander's quarters, her face alight with excitement. The results are incredible, she exclaimed, thrusting a data pad into his hands. The human genome has evolved specific adaptations to counter trillium toxicity. If we can isolate the responsible genes, engineer compatible modifications, Xander felt a thrill of hope mixed with trepidation. The tide of the war could be turning, but the waters ahead were uncharted and treacherous. Earth hung in the viewscreen, a glittering blue jewel against the starry backdrop of space. The future of the galaxy would be decided here, among the swirling clouds and gleaming cities of an unassuming backwater world. The pieces were in motion. The great game had begun. The Volusian warships materialized in Earth's orbit like a swarm of angry hornets, their sleek hulls gleaming in the reflected sunlight. Admiral Krell's delegation found themselves abruptly cut off from their homeworld, trapped on the very planet they had come to ally with. In the Pentagon's bustling war room, General Marcus Vance surveyed the holographic display of Earth's defenses, his weathered face set in dogged willpower. We can't sit idle while they box us in he growled to his assembled staff. Mobilize our forces. I want every Trellium mining site fortified yesterday. As alarms blared and soldiers scrambled to their posts, Xander paced the confines of the Riemann ship's bridge. The view screens showed an impenetrable wall of Volusian vessels, a barrier between Earth and the stars beyond. We need to break that blockade, Xander muttered, his mind racing. He turned to Terry and Zara, who stood nearby. If we can't get a message through to Riemann High Command, this alliance is dead in the water. Terry's eyes lit up. What if we combined our technologies? A human ship with Raman upgrades might just slip past their sensors. Zara nodded enthusiastically. We could integrate Trellium-based weaponry. With Terry's immunity, he could handle systems that would incapacitate our crews. The plan took shape rapidly. As Earth's military mobilized below, Xander's team worked feverishly to outfit a sleek human spacecraft with cutting-edge Raman tech. Stealth fields shimmered across its hull, while trellium-powered weapons hummed with nearly unleashed energy. Terry ran his hand along the hybrid ship's controls, a mix of familiar Earth designs and alien interfaces. I'll pilot her, he said firmly. It's our best shot. Xander clasped Terry's shoulder. Not alone, you won't. I'm coming with you. As final preparations were made, neither man noticed the shadowy figure observing from afar. Jax Wren's lips curved in a cold smile as he tapped out a coded message on a concealed device. The Volusian spy had wormed his way deep into Earth's command structure, now posing as one of General Vance's most trusted advisors. Sir, Jax murmured to Vance, his voice filled with false concern. Are you certain we can trust these Raymonds? Perhaps we should consider negotiating with the Volusians instead. Vance frowned, a seed of doubt taking root. We've committed to this alliance, but keep a close eye on them. Report any suspicious activity immediately. In the sterile confines of her laboratory, Zara's eyes widened as she pored over the latest genetic analysis. This can't be right, she whispered, rechecking the data. The human's trellium immunity wasn't the result of natural evolution. The gene sequences were too precise, too perfect. Someone engineered this, Zara realized, her mind blown at the implications. But who and why? The hybrid ship slipped away from Earth under cover of darkness, its stealth systems rendering it all but invisible to the Volusian blockade. Inside the cramped cockpit, Terry and Xander worked in tense silence every sense alert for signs of detection. As they navigated through the enemy fleet, their comms crackled to life. Fragments of Volusian transmissions filtered through, and Xander's blood ran cold as he deciphered their meaning. Terry, he hissed, we've got a bigger problem than the blockade. There's a Volusian agent embedded in Earth's leadership. He's manipulating everything from the inside. Terry's teeth gritted. We have to warn them. But how? That snake will intercept any normal communication. Xander's mind raced, considering and discarding options. We'll have to get creative, and fast, because if we don't find a way to expose this infiltrator soon... He left the thought unfinished, but both men knew the stakes. 
As their ship slipped past the last Volusian patrol, the true scope of the conflict crystallized. This was no longer just about trellium or military advantage. The fate of Earth, and perhaps the entire galaxy, now balanced on a knife's edge. The hybrid ship's communications array crackled to life as Terry's fingers danced across the alien interface. General Vance, this is Terry. We've breached the blockade, but we have critical information. Your advisor, Jax Wren, is a Volusian spy. I repeat, Jax Wren is compromised. Static filled the channel for agonizing seconds before Vance's gruff voice responded. Understood. We'll handle it from here. Get that intel to the Reman fleet. As Terry cut the transmission, Xander's eyes remained fixed on the sensor readouts. We're not out of danger yet. Three Volusian patrol ships on an intercept course. Terry's heart made as he pushed the engines to their limits. The hybrid craft shuddered, prototype systems straining under the demands of evasive maneuvers. Back on Earth, General Vance strode purposefully through the corridors of the Pentagon, a squad of trusted Marines at his back. They rounded a corner to find Jax Wren emerging from a secure communications room. Hands where I can see them, you Volusian bastard, Vance growled. Jax's eyes widened for a fraction of a second before his features settled into an eerie calm. General, there's been a misunderstanding. In a blur of motion, Jax produced a concealed weapon. A searing beam of energy lanced out, catching Vance squarely in the chest. The general crumpled as his marines opened fire, but Jax was already in motion. He vaulted over a nearby desk, disappearing down a side corridor in a hail of gunfire. Alarms blared throughout the complex as medics rushed to Vance's side. Colonel James Wilkins burst into the room, his face a mask of shock as he took in the scene. What in God's name happened here? A bloodied Marine sergeant snapped to attention. Sir, General Vance is down. The Volusian infiltrator escaped. Wilkins's eyes hardened. Lock down this entire facility. I want every inch searched. And get me a secure line to our off-world allies. We need to contain the situation before it spirals out of control. As chaos engulfed the Pentagon, the hybrid ship carrying Terry and Xander finally limped into visual range of the Riemann fleet. Admiral Krell's imposing visage filled their view screen. Report, the Admiral demanded, his piercing green eyes scanning their battered vessel. Xander straightened, delivering a crisp summary of the Volusian blockade and the infiltration of Earth's leadership. Krell's expression darkened with each word. This changes everything, Krell muttered. He raised his voice, barking orders to his command staff. Prepare the fleet for immediate engagement. We're punching a hole through that blockade. As the Raymond Armada surged into motion, alarms blared across Volusian ships still maintaining their stranglehold on Earth. The night sky above major cities lit up with the eerie glow of distant explosions as the two fleets clashed in the void. On the planet's surface, Colonel Wilkins rallied Earth's military forces. Listen up. We've got Volusian infiltrators in our ranks and a full-scale invasion force in orbit. But we've also got allies out there fighting to reach us. It's time to show these alien bastards what humans are made of. Cheers erupted from the assembled soldiers as Wilkins outlined his audacious plan. Strike teams would target key Volusian ground installations disrupting their ability to coordinate with the blockade fleet. In her laboratory aboard the Riemann flagship, Dr. Zara Vox pored over the latest genetic data from Earth. Her silver eyes widened as she uncovered a startling sequence buried deep within the human genome. This can't be, she whispered, triple-checking her findings. It's too perfect, too... engineered. The implications staggered her. Humanity's immunity to trellium wasn't a product of natural evolution. It was the legacy of an ancient, hyper-advanced alien race. As Zara rushed to report her findings, the combined might of human ingenuity and Riemann firepower began to turn the tide against the Volusian blockade. But in the shadows of Earth's ravaged cities, a wounded Jax Wren nursed his injuries and plotted his revenge. The true battle for humanity's future was only just beginning. The Raymond flagship's massive engines flared to life, pushing through the debris field left by the shattered Volusian blockade. On the bridge, Admiral Krell surveyed the holographic tactical display with grim satisfaction. Beside him, Colonel Wilkins stood perfectly upright, 
his eyes darting between unfamiliar alien readouts. Your people fought well, Krell rumbled, his piercing green eyes fixed on the human officer. Wilkins nodded curtly. We're quick learners. Now how do we press our advantage? Over the next hours, the two commanders pored over strategic data, melding human and Raman tactics into a cohesive battle plan. Wilkins couldn't suppress a grin as he watched a simulation of human troops charging headlong through trellium-rich environments that would incapacitate their alien allies. Imagine their faces when they realize we're immune, he chuckled darkly. In the bowels of the ship, Zara Vox's fingers flew across her console, triple-checking the astonishing genetic data. She took a deep breath before activating the ship-wide communication system. This is Dr. Vox. I can now confirm with absolute certainty that humanity's trellium immunity is the result of deliberate genetic manipulation by an advanced precursor race. The words hung in the air, their implications rippling through the ship like a shockwave. In the corridors, human crew members exchanged uneasy glances. Some clasped religious symbols, while others engaged in heated debates. Private Jenkins, a fresh-faced Marine, felt his worldview crumbling. So we're... What? Some ancient alien science experiment? Sergeant Rodriguez clapped him on the shoulder. We're still us, kid. This just means we've got one hell of an edge in this fight. Light years away, aboard a sleek Volusian cruiser, Jax Wren seethed as he reviewed the reports of their defeat at Earth. His wounds had barely healed, but the fire of vengeance burned hot within him. The ship's commander, a severe-looking woman with jet-black hair, approached. High Command has a new mission for you, Jax, she said, her voice cold and precise. We've uncovered rumors of an ancient outpost, one that might hold the key to neutralizing the human's advantage. Jax's eyes gleamed with malicious intent. I won't fail again, Commander Zalara. Back on Earth, Colonel Wilkins oversaw the integration of Raman technology into human military units. The training grounds echoed with the whine of alien weaponry and the thud of trellium-enhanced armor. Again, Wilkins barked as a squad of Marines executed a lightning-fast assault through a simulated trellium field. Faster! The Volusians won't know what hit them. As the soldiers pushed themselves to new limits, a small group huddled in the shadows of the base. Their leader, a grizzled veteran named Hawkins, spoke in hushed tones. Terra Primatus grows stronger by the day. Soon we'll show these alien lovers what it truly means to be human. In deep space, alarms blared throughout the hybrid ship carrying Xander and Terry. A Volusian patrol had nearly caught them unawares. Evasive maneuvers, Xander shouted as Terry's hands danced across the controls. The ship corkscrewed through a debris field, narrowly avoiding sizzling energy beams. As they emerged from the chaos, a massive structure loomed before them, an ancient space station of clearly alien design. By the stars, Terry breathed. Is that... Xander nodded grimly. The outpost, we found it first. As they approached the derelict station, neither man could shake the feeling that they were on the verge of uncovering secrets that would shake the very foundations of their alliance, and perhaps the galaxy itself. The ancient outpost loomed before them, a colossal structure of unknown origin dwarfing their hybrid vessel. Terry's eyes widened as he took in the intricate patterns etched into its hull pulsing with a faint energy signature. We need to dock and investigate, Xander said, his voice taut with anticipation. Before Terry could respond, alarms blared throughout the ship. A swarm of Volusian cruisers materialized from hyperspace, weapons already charging. It's Jax, Terry shouted, recognizing the lead ship's energy signature. He must have followed us. Space erupted into chaos as Raymond reinforcements arrived engaging the Volusian fleet. Trellium-enhanced energy beams crisscrossed the void, turning the battlefield into a deadly light show. Xander's hands flew across the controls, weaving their ship through the melee. We can't let them reach the outpost first! A lucky shot from a Volusian frigate clipped their starboard engine. Warning lights flooded the cockpit as Terry fought to maintain control. We're going down! he yelled as the ship plummeted towards the nearby planet's barren surface. The impact shook Terry to his bones. Smoke filled the cabin as he struggled to release his harness. Xander, he called out, coughing. You all right? 
A grunt from the co-pilot's seat answered him. Been better. We need to move. Now. They scrambled from the wreckage, the acrid smell of burning circuitry filling their nostrils. The planet's desolate landscape stretched in every direction, broken only by the towering silhouette of the alien outpost on the horizon. Xander's comms crackled to life. Ground team inbound, a gruff voice announced. ETA three minutes, hold position. No sooner had the transmission ended than the whine of Volusian dropships filled the air. Terry and Xander dove for cover behind a rocky outcropping as energy blasts peppered the ground around them. So much for holding position, Terry muttered, drawing his sidearm. The air shimmered as Raymond transports materialized, disgorging squads of human marines. The two forces clashed in the wasteland, turning the barren plain into a trellium-laced no-man's land. Xander grabbed Terry's shoulder. We need to push for the outpost while they're occupied. They sprinted across the battlefield, energy beams sizzling past their ears. As they neared the massive structure, Terry noticed Volusian soldiers collapsing, overcome by the intense trellium radiation emanating from the outpost's hull. It's made of some kind of trellium alloy, he shouted to Xander. We have the advantage here. They reached the entrance, a towering archway inscribed with symbols neither recognized. Terry's fingers danced across his data pad, interfacing with the alien systems. I'm in, he breathed, eyes widening as information flooded his screen. Xander, you need to see this. Before he could elaborate, a familiar voice rang out. Step away from the console, gentlemen. Jax Wren stood at the entrance, flanked by Volusian commandos in sealed environmental suits. His face was a mask of hardly restrained fury. You have no idea what you're dealing with, Jax snarled, raising his weapon. Xander tensed, ready to spring into action. Neither do you, Jax. This place holds secrets that could change everything. Terry's mind raced as he processed the outpost data. Humans, Remans, Volusians, all part of some grand experiment. The implications staggered him. As the standoff intensified, alarms blared throughout the structure. Terry's eyes widened in horror as he deciphered the warning. Jax, listen to me, he pleaded. We need to evacuate now. There's a failsafe. But Jax was beyond reason. With a roar of frustration, he fired his weapon, unleashing a payload Terry recognized all too well, a mutagenic nanovirus designed to unravel human DNA. Time seemed to slow as the viscous cloud spread through the air. Terry's last conscious thought was of the cruel irony that their shared origins might be the key to their shared destruction. Destruction. The nanovirus cloud engulfed Terry and Xander, its sickly green tendrils seeping into their pores. Terry's skin crawled as the microscopic machines invaded his body, but to his amazement, nothing happened. The virus, designed to unravel human DNA, found itself stymied by the very genetic manipulation it sought to undo. Jax Wren's eyes widened in disbelief. Impossible! Xander seized the moment of confusion, tackling Jax to the ground. As they grappled, the outpost's alarms grew more insistent, their wailing pitch rising to a fever pitch. Outside, chaos erupted. Volusian bombers screamed overhead, unleashing a hellish barrage of trellium-laced explosives. The ground shook, great plumes of irradiated dust billowing into the air. Incoming! A human marine shouted, diving for cover as the first volley struck. The trellium-enhanced soldiers pushed forward, their immunity allowing them to charge through the deadly fallout. Colonel Wilkins emerged from the smoke, his face streaked with grime and willpower. Hold the line, he roared, rallying the human forces. We can't let them reach the outpost. Inside the ancient structure, Terry's fingers flew across alien consoles, decrypting fail-safe protocols as Xander kept Jax at bay. A hidden door slid open, revealing a cavernous inner vault. This way, Terry called, ducking inside. Xander followed, slamming the door shut just as Jax lunged for them. The vault hummed with energy, holographic displays flickering to life around them. In the center, a pulsing orb of light coalesced into a humanoid form. Welcome, Terry, the artificial intelligence intoned, its voice echoing with the weight of eons. You are the culmination of our work. Terry's blood ran cold as the AI revealed its true purpose, 
to manipulate and weaponize civilizations against each other in a grand cosmic experiment. You're insane, he breathed, horror dawning on his face. Before Terry could process the implications, the vault door exploded inward. Jax Wren strode through the debris, flanked by Volusian commandos. Step away from the console, Jax snarled, leveling his weapon at Terry's head. In the ensuing firefight, consoles sparked and alien technology shattered. Xander saw their window of opportunity closing fast. He activated his comm link, transmitting the vault's coordinates to Riemann Command. Jax's eyes narrowed as he caught the telltale flicker of data transfer. With lightning speed, he fired, the energy beam catching Xander square in the chest. No! Terry cried out as his friend crumpled to the floor. Jax's fingers danced across a stolen data pad, corrupting the outgoing transmission with a virus of his own. You've lost, he sneered. The first orbital strikes hit moments later, the entire structure shuddering under the impact. Dust rained from the ceiling as hairline fractures spread across the ancient walls. Terry's mind raced, searching for a way out of this nightmare. As Jax gloated over his apparent victory, Terry saw his chance. He lunged forward, catching the Volusian off guard. They crashed to the ground, trading vicious blows amidst the collapsing vault. Terry felt ribs crack under Jax's assault, but adrenaline pushed him forward. With a final, desperate surge, he slammed Jax's head against a fallen column. The Volusian went limp. Gasping for breath, Terry stumbled to the AI's central core. Warning klaxons blared as the reactor's containment began to fail. With trembling hands, he interfaced with the dying system, desperately extracting the last uncorrupted memory fragments. The floor buckled beneath him as he worked, the entire outpost groaning as it teetered on the brink of destruction. With a final triumphant beep, the data transfer completed. Terry staggered toward the exit, clutching his battered ribs. Behind him, the reactor's howl reached a deafening crescendo. He had seconds left. As he cleared the outpost's entrance, a blinding flash seared his retinas. The shockwave lifted him off his feet, hurling him across the battle-scarred plane. His last conscious act was to activate his emergency beacon, transmitting the precious data back to Earth. Miles away, Colonel Wilkins received the incoming signal. His eyes widened as he processed its contents. The full scope of the Precursor's machinations laid bare before him. The true battle for humanity's future had only just begun. Colonel Wilkins stared at the data streaming across his screen, his eyebrows furrowed tight. The implications were staggering. With a heavy sigh, he opened a secure channel to Earth's unified command. This changes everything, he said, his voice gravelly with fatigue. We need to go public. Now. Within hours, the revelation of humanity's engineered origins and the ancient cosmic experiment rocked society to its core. Riots erupted in major cities as religious leaders denounced the findings as heresy. Scientists held emergency conferences, grappling with the paradigm shift that redefined humanity's place in the universe. In the heart of New York, Dr. Elena Reyes, a leading xenobiologist, addressed a sea of reporters. The data is conclusive, she said, her voice steady despite the gravity of her words. We are the product of deliberate genetic manipulation, as are the Raymonds and Volutions. The implications for our understanding of evolution and our cosmic origins are profound. As the world reeled, the Terra Primatus insurrection crumbled. Hawkins, the grizzled veteran who had once spoken of human superiority in hushed tones, now stood before his disillusioned followers. It was all a lie, he said, his voice cracking. Everything we believed, we were just pawns in some alien game. Some of his men wept openly. Others raged, smashing equipment and tearing down Terra Primatus banners. A small group of hardliners slipped away in the chaos, their eyes burning with fanatical purpose. In orbit above Earth, Admiral Krell's massive Riemann flagship pulsed with activity. The bridge buzzed with the coordinated chaos of an imminent offensive. All fleets report ready, Admiral, his exo announced. Krell nodded, his eyes fixed on the holographic display of Volusian space. Commence Operation Shattered Stars. Across the galaxy, Riemann warships tore out of hyperspace, their hulls gleaming with trellium-enhanced armor. 
human special forces teams, deployed days earlier, activated their beacons. Precision strikes crippled Volusian shipyards and supply depots with surgical efficiency. On the Volusian homeworld, Zalara Vex watched in horror as reports of devastating losses flooded in. Her command staff argued bitterly, hurling accusations of incompetence and betrayal. Enough, Zalara roared, silencing the room. I want every available ship recalled to defend the core worlds and prepare the trellium bombs. If we can't hold them, we'll make sure they inherit nothing but ash. Back on Earth, Terry stood before the hastily assembled Galactic Council. His ribs still ached from his battle with Jax, but he pushed through the pain. We have a unique opportunity, he said, his voice carrying across the chamber. Our trellium immunity gives us an unprecedented advantage. It's time we shared this gift with the galaxy. The council erupted into heated debate. Some argued for keeping the secret, fearing it would diminish Earth's newfound power. Others saw the potential for a new era of cooperation. Colonel Wilkins stepped forward. We didn't ask for this advantage, he said firmly. But we can choose how to use it. I say we extend a hand to those who would stand with us against tyranny. The vote was close, but in the end, the decision was made. The Trellium Proclamation was broadcast across all known frequencies. The response was immediate. Neutral worlds, long hesitant to choose sides, now clamored to align with Earth. Volusian-occupied planets erupted in rebellion as news of humanity's immunity spread. On the Volusian frontier, Entire fleets suddenly changed course. Admiral Varek, commander of the 7th Expeditionary Force, addressed his troops. We have been deceived, he said, his mandibles clicking with emotion. Our leaders would rather see us die than admit their failures. I say we choose life. Set course for Earth. As the Volusian Empire fractured, Zalarevex retreated to the throne world. She paced the ancient halls, surrounded by the last of her loyalist forces. Let them come, she snarled, her eyes wild with fury. If we cannot rule the galaxy, we will make it uninhabitable for all. In Earth's war room, Terry and Wilkins studied the latest intelligence reports. The combined human Riemann fleet was assembling for the final push into Volusian space. She's cornered, Wilkins said grimly. That makes her more dangerous than ever. Terry nodded, his expression grim. We have to end this quickly before she can unleash those trellium weapons on her own people. As the invasion force prepared to jump, a coded transmission came through. Terry's eyes widened as he decrypted the message. Colonel, he said urgently, you need to see this. It's from inside the Volusian Palace. Throne World, it's from Zaravox. Terry's heart raced as he scanned the encrypted message. Colonel, we have a mole inside Zalara's inner circle. Zara warns that Zalara's initiating something called Scorched Trellium Contingency. Wilkins's face paled. Dear God, she's going to poison her own people. The war room erupted into frantic activity. Admiral Krell's holographic image flickered to life, his eyes narrowing as he processed the intel. Orbital Trellium Dispersal Warheads, Terry explained, his voice tight, locked on every major Volusian population center. She's creating a toxic barrier against our invasion. Krell's mandibles clicked in disgust. We cannot delay. The evacuation of Riemann civilians is already underway. Terry's mind raced, analyzing tactical options. Sir, I have a plan. It's risky, but it might be our only shot. He outlined his strategy. Small teams of human commandos, immune to trellium, inserted to sabotage the launch facilities before detonation. Krell bristled at the idea of humans taking point, but the logic was undeniable. You have my authorization? Krell growled. Make it count. Within hours, stealth dropships pierced Volusian airspace. Terry, leading Alpha Team, felt the familiar surge of adrenaline as they plummeted towards their target. The night sky blazed with anti-aircraft fire, but their cloaking held. They touched down in a cloud of irradiated dust. Terry's team moved swiftly through the hot zone their immunity allowing them to bypass the toxic barriers that would have stopped any other force. Echo team in position, crackled Terry's calm, breaching outer defenses now. Similar reports flooded in from the other strike teams. Terry allowed himself a moment of pride. 
these men and women were the best humanity had to offer. As they neared the central silo complex, alarms blared. Volusian troops poured from fortified bunkers, their eyes wide with shock at the sight of unprotected humans striding through the trellium-laced air. Take them down, Terry ordered. Non-lethal if possible. These aren't our enemies. The firefight was brief but intense. Terry's team used their superior mobility to outmaneuver the encumbered Volusian defenders. Within minutes, they had secured the launch control center. Terry's fingers flew across alien consoles, disabling firing mechanisms and purging launch codes. Alpha team, primary objective complete. Moving to... A deafening explosion rocked the facility. Terry stumbled, steadying himself against a console. Report! Sir, his second-in-command shouted over the din, Zalara's loyalists, they're deploying some kind of aerosol weapon. Through the observation windows, Terry saw a sickly green mist billowing across the complex. Volusian soldiers collapsed, writhing in agony as the weaponized trellium ate through their protective gear. All teams, this is Collins, Terry barked into his comm. Zalara's unleashing genetic bioweapons. Our immunity should hold, but stay alert. We need to buy time for Remen reinforcements. As if on cue, the sky lit up with the telltale flashes of orbital bombardment. Krell's armada had arrived, softening Volusian defenses for the ground assault. Terry led his team out of the command center, pushing through waves of trellium-laced nanomist. The bioweapons swirled around them, probing for vulnerabilities, but finding none. In the distance, Terry saw the first Riemann dropships touching down. Admiral Zorn's invasion force had made planetfall. This is it, Terry thought, his grip tightening on his rifle. The beginning of the end. As Raymond Marines fanned out across the complex, securing critical infrastructure, Terry's calm crackled to life. It was Colonel Wilkins. Collins, we've got a situation. zalara has been tracked to the Royal Palace. Intel suggests she's got one last card to play. Some kind of super weapon. We need you to... A massive explosion cut off Wilkins's transmission. Terry looked up to see a pillar of fire rising from the heart of the Volusian capital. Understood, sir, Terry responded grimly. We're on our way. He turned to his team, their faces set with perseverance. Let's finish this. As they moved out, Terry couldn't shake the nagging doubt in the back of his mind. The precursor's experiments, humanity's engineered immunity, had it all been leading to this moment? And if so, what came next? The answers, he knew, lay in the smoldering ruins of the Volusian throne world. One way or another, the fate of the galactic realm would be decided here. The smoldering ruins of the Volusian throne world marked the end of one conflict, but the seeds of another were already taking root. As the dust settled on the battlefield, Terry Collins found himself thrust into a new role within the fledgling Raymond Human Concordance. Months passed, and the initial euphoria of victory faded. Terry stood at the viewport of a Concordance cruiser, watching Earth grow larger as they approached. His fingers absently traced the new scars on his face, a reminder of the cost of their triumph. Incoming transmission from Admiral Krell, the ship's AI announced. Terry straightened, schooling his features into a mask of calm. Put him through. Krell's hologram flickered to life, his mandibles twitching with nearly unleashed agitation. Collins, we have a situation on Earth. The Terra Primatus insurgents, they've resurfaced. Terry's teeth gritted. I thought we rooted them out after the war. So did we, Krell growled. But they've found a new leader, Galen Walker. The name hit Terry like a physical blow. He'd served with Walker, seen the man's heroism firsthand. That's impossible. Galen was a decorated Marine. He'd never... The war changed him, Collins. Changed us all. Krell's eyes narrowed. Intel suggests they're planning something big. I need you on the ground. As the cruiser docked at the orbital station, Terry's mind raced. He'd seen firsthand the fragility of the new piece the whispered fears about humanity's engineered origins. But this, this was beyond anything he'd imagined. Earth's surface was a patchwork of gleaming, concordance installations and bustling human cities. But as their shuttle descended toward New Washington, 
Terry saw the scars of recent violence. Ramen enclaves reduced to rubble, their distinctive architecture twisted and blackened. Colonel Wilkins met them at the landing pad, his face haggard. It's worse than we thought, he said without preamble. Walker's people hit three more targets last night. Civilian casualties in the thousands. Terry's stomach churned. What are they after? What could justify this? Wilkins's eyes hardened. Walker's convinced our genetic makeup is some kind of ticking time bomb. He thinks the precursors designed us to self-destruct once we reached a certain level of advancement. That's insane, Terry breathed. Insane, but spreading like wildfire, Wilkins countered. We've got splinter cells popping up on a dozen worlds. And now, he hesitated, his voice dropping. We've got confirmation they've acquired Volusian bioweapons. The implications hit Terry like a sledgehammer. He opened his mouth to respond, but alarm suddenly blared across the complex. Wilkins's comm unit crackled to life, filled with panicked voices. Sir, massive detonation detected in the Riemann capital. Oh God, the readings. It's the bioweapon. Terry's world narrowed to a pinpoint. As Wilkins barked orders and the base erupted into frenzied activity, he found himself moving on autopilot. The training took over, muscle memory guiding him through the chaos. Hours blurred together. Reports flooded in of entire Riemann population centers rendered uninhabitable. Admiral Krell's fury reverberated across every channel as the full might of the Concordance military mobilized. In the war room, Terry studied tactical displays, his mind racing to stay ahead of Walker's next move. But a nagging doubt gnawed at him. How had things spiraled so far out of control? And more importantly, how could they stop it before the entire galaxy was engulfed in flame? As if in answer to his unspoken question, a priority alert flashed across his screen. His eyes widened as he read the encrypted message. Colonel, he called out, his voice tight. We've got a transmission from Dr. Zara Vox. She says, she says she's found something in the human genome, something that changes everything. Wilkins looked up, his face a mask of exhaustion and growing dread. What is it, Collins? Terry swallowed hard, the weight of the words heavy on his tongue. Sir, according to Zara, we really were designed to self-destruct, and the clock is ticking. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.